This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So this cap applies um, and limits the amount of loss relief that is available that, to be claimed. And this is the rule. The cap is the higher of £50,000 or 25% of your adjusted total income. So adjusted total income is after deducting from the total income the gross amount of any pension contributions, a bit like ANI. So the restriction applies to your current year total income and earlier years if it's set against income other than profits from the same trade. This is easier when we look at an example than it is to look at the words. The cap is only tested at TX within this section of relief against total income for current year and all preceding years. So if you get one of these claims and it's obvious, then this information you need to bring to bear to add to the, um, the, the rules that you're thinking about. So I have an illustration here which will help you <coughs> <clears throat> to understand this a little better. And we have a question for Louise. She's a sole trader with adjusted profits. You'll notice the questions are all starting to look very same. Year ended 23 March. She had a profit and then a massive loss in 24. Something went drastically wrong. And she's got £60,000 worth of employment income each year we are to compute remember that means to calculate the taxable income for each of these years assuming there's that word again loss relief claims against total income are made in both years they're basically telling you what to do in this situation again you write out the years across the top the pro forma down the side and then you copy the question into the answer so this is copy and then we set up the loss memorandum okay so that's there so what we're doing now is we are going to do a relief against total income in the current year and then the previous year. So loss relief in 23-24 is capped at 50,000 as it is the higher of, because this is against non-tax, non-trade income. This is non-trade income here. So it's 50,000 as it's the higher of 50,000 or 25% of that employment income of 60,000 pounds. So we're at the maximum amount of loss that we can claim. So that's the rule. The maximum we can claim in the current year is 50,000. Again, all or nothing. Therefore, some of these are wasted. We only really need 10,000, don't we? So you have a choice. You can either put 12,570 in or you can put 10,000 and put restricted next to it. So that 50,000 is there. So we've applied the rule, the maximum of 50,000. Now, when we do the previous year, you are entitled to relieve those losses against the same trade to the full. So in 2023, the loss relief claim is made in full against trade income. But again, the cap applies against the other income because it's non-trade. It's employment income. So we have to do the same calculation again. So we've I've separated them out. You see how I've separated them? Because this is a relief against total income, which is restricted. And this is against profits from the same trade. So the wording is slightly different with this. Now, obviously, this is a little bit more complicated and you may need to look at the rule again and look at this question again. 
and maybe look at your BPP text to make sure that you have all the details that you need um, for that. And again, we then deduct these two from our loss memorandum and that then is carried forward to be relieved against profits from the same trade um, at a future time. Relief against trade profits against afterwards. So we've done a current year claim. If that claim is made, you can then offset any remaining losses against chargeable gains in the same year. Okay. So the amount of the trading loss that can be set off against gains is the lower of the loss remaining after income gain, i.e. the relevant amount, or the maximum amount. I think you're beginning to realise that losses is quite a <coughs> excuse me, um, quite a difficult topic. It will come up in the exam because it is a difficult topic. But once you have spent some time, this is definitely a chapter that needs to be watched and listened to and you need to look at the examples and the answers that I'm giving but then you definitely need to go back and do this again it needs to be practiced so the maximum amount is the total gains in the year less the total losses for the year and the losses brought forward okay so this rule is either the relevant amount, i.e. what have you got left after you've done your income tax, or the maximum amount. In other words, these two, you have to help yourself before HMRC will help you. So the trading loss is set against the current year net chargeable gains before considering the losses brought forward. You don't actually have to put them in. You have to put them in there in order to calculate the maximum amount. You don't have to do it in reality, but you do have to do it for the rule to make sure that you calculate the maximum amount correctly. So there's a note here just to read through. It says capital losses brought forward are used in the calculation of the maximum amount but may not actually be offset in the current year as the trading loss is set off first followed by the AEA. Now that's the annual exempt amount and when we do capital gains tax that will become more um, familiar to you. If there are still net gains after the annual exempt amount then brought forward capital losses can be used to reduce that gain even further. So the restriction of set off to a maximum amount of 50 or 25% of ATA does not apply to the offset against gains. Okay, it doesn't apply. So it's a separate rule. Thank goodness you don't have to deal with them all together. So example number three. This is Cathy. She has gains in 23, 24 of 44,000. A loss brought forward of four and a remaining trade loss of 24,000 after a claim of total income for the tax year has been made. So we are to calculate her taxable gains for 2324. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the model answer for this. So here we can see the, the answer to example number three, Cathy. And it reads, provided an election is made, the whole of the trade loss remaining after the claim against total income has been made will be available. So that's the rule. You've done an, an income tax claim in the current year and now you can bring the balance forward into capital gains. The entire £24,000 of loss is available to set off against the net gain, gains as is less than the maximum amount. Now remember the maximum amount is the amount of gains in the year less any losses that you have in full. So it is less than that amount and therefore it's the lower of the two. The rule was the lower of these two figures. The relevant amount 
and the maximum amount. The loss of 24,000 is then applied against the net gains in the tax year before the deduction of losses before brought forward and before the deduction of the annual exempt amount. And as I said before, once we do capital gains, you'll understand that a little bit more. So we have capital gains of 44 per the question, maximum loss relief set off. Then we can take into account the annual exempt amount and then we take off the loss. So the gains in that year are now reduced down to 10. So back to where we were in the chapter. Losses in opening years. So this is the special rule that's available if you have a loss arising in the first four tax years of your trade. And the rule is you carry back that loss three years on a first in, first out. basis against total income. One claim only for all three years and it can generate a refund of tax for those years because you'll pay them and you'll get some interest and again all or nothing and it cannot be restricted to preserve the personal allowance so you may lose your personal allowance. So let's have a look at example number four. Matthias, Matthias starts trading on the 1st of April and makes his first set of accounts. So that's your hint. He starts trading. So your brain would go, ooh, opening years. Potentially. Okay, the maybe current year, previous year. There's no previous year because he's only just started trading. So that's option one. That would be option two. You'd have to read the question. But as you are reading the question carefully, these things should be coming into your head. Okay. Ooh, that's a hint. Ooh, that's a hint. That sort of thing. First accounts to March 24, he made a loss. Now, prior to starting in business, Matthias was employed, earning a salary of £24,000 per year, and he resigned from his job on the 31st of August. We are to calculate Matthias's income for all years after claiming open years relief. So let's see how that would work. So we need to set up the pro forma. So we have 20, 21, 21, 22, 22, 23, 23, 24 years across the top. Pro forma down the side, trade profits. Employment income. Um, total income. Loss relief. And a loss memorandum. And in the, it was a 23-24 loss of 50,000. Set up your pro forma. Now we had employment income, didn't we? So there was 24,000 there. 24,000 there. 24,000 there. Now he resigned part way through the year, so we've only got 10,000 there. Nothing, 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 because he wasn't in business, and nil. Now that's different, you see? Nothing, 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 nil, because there can never be a minus in that. So all we've done so far is copy the question into the answer. And we have achieved probably one one and a half marks. So we are going to do an opening year's claim. So it is a first in, first out, three year claim. Which means that this is year one, that is year two, and that is year three. 
also it is all or nothing so year one would be 24,000 we lose those personal allowances year two and again don't forget to put the date so that is 2021 20, and then 21 22 we're also going to claim 24,000 and bring that down to nil which means we have a balance of two which we can do in 22 23 and bring that down to 22,000 that is a total of 10 and we have nothing left